Hey guys, Carl from Purple Moose Plays. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the small solo or cooperative tile laying game, A Gentle Rain, from Mondo Games and designer Kevin Wilson, in which players work together laying down tiles, building out a beautiful lake, and watching as the lily blossoms bloom. I do have to mention that I was given a review copy of this game, but I will, as always, do my best to give you my own honest opinions on the game. With that being said, let's head down to the table for a playthrough, and then I'll meet you back up here to let you know what I think. Take a deep breath and relax. You have come to the lake, hoping to see a rare and beautiful sight. The floating lilies only open their blossoms in the rain, and rarely do all eight kinds of lily bloom at once. Your journey is to place the lake tiles in such a way to cause all eight types of lilies to bloom before you run out of tiles and the rain ends. Get comfortable. Change into some loose clothing if you can. Perhaps turn on soft music or make yourself some tea. Take a moment to stand up and stretch and roll the stress out of your shoulders. Inhale through your nose. Hold that breath for a moment, then exhale through your mouth. Now begin. All right, I know that was a little bit different than how I normally start these videos, but I really liked the way that the rule book was laid out like that. So I wanted to share at least that opening piece from the book. For the rest of the setup, I will go ahead and explain how the game sets up and plays just like I normally do. So let's go ahead and get into that. Now that you're nice and relaxed, to set up a game of a gentle rain, begin by placing the eight blossom tokens out on the table, face up. Next, you're going to take all of the lake tiles and shuffle them up nicely, placing the stack of tiles off to the side of the play area. And then you'll begin the game by turning over the top tile and placing it in the center of the play area. So a gentle rain is going to play out over a series of turns and each turn you're going to turn over the top tile and you're going to need to place the tile in such a way that the flowers on the tile match flowers that are somewhere already in your lake. If at any point you're able to place four tiles adjacent to each other making a circle or an empty hole in between the four tiles you will then place one of the flower tokens or blossom tokens into that hole that matches one of the four colors on the sides or adjacent to that hole. You will then place one of the blossom tokens in the hole that matches one of the four colors that are surrounding that hole. If you are able to place all eight flowers out on the play area, you immediately end the game. If you are unable to place them but you run out of tiles, that will also trigger the end of the game. At the end of the game, you're going to count the number of blossoms that you were able to place as well as the number of tiles that were remaining and that number will be your final score for the game. But realistically, this game is not really designed for a final score but more about the journey and the sort of relaxing gameplay as you sort of build this puzzle of the lake filled with lily blossoms and you'll see how that works as we get into the play. So with all that being said, let's go right ahead and get into the gameplay. So we start by turning over a tile. And you can see on this tile we've got a blue, a red, a green, and an orange. And they need to place it so that it matches this tile. So I could place this green blossom here, connecting those like that. Or I could place the red at the top here, connecting those like that. Um, just because our screen runs longer this way than up and down, I will start by placing here. And we look at another tile. All right. Green, yellow, white, and black means I must place here. Every tile you draw must be placed if possible, even if it's not in a place you want it to place. If you have a tile that does not match anywhere and is physically impossible to be placed, it is just discarded from the game. All right, now I'm gonna place this tile here, connecting this red flower means over here I'm looking for a black and green to finish that spot. And over here I'm looking for an orange and a white to finish that spot. It is important to give yourself as many different sort of combinations of colors to Im increase your, your possibility or the rate that you might be able to get what you need from the stack. If they're all the same color, then you're gonna ruin your chances if you keep drawing colors that don't match what you've put out. So it's a great idea to keep multiple patterns or multiple pairs of colors. 
All right, so here we go. I've got an orange, but I can't put that orange there because the purple does not match the white flower. I think I will continue. Oh, uh, no, I'm going to put this down here. I don't have any purple red pairs yet, so that's another new pair to add. All right. Hmm. Okay. I like. See, so if I put this here, I'm connecting the blue, but now we've got an orange here and an orange here, and that limits the type of color or the color of blossom that we can put in the middle because. Remember, the blossom we place has to match one of the four flowers, and if two of them are the same, that limits our chances. So we want to try to avoid that as much as possible. Um, sure, so I'm going to put this purple one here because I've got a black and a blue and a black and a white there, so they don't match, which is good. I didn't realize I did do a black and a black here, which is not a great idea, but it is what it is at this point. All right, next tile comes out. Yeah, we're not doing very well with pairs or combinations yet, but I will put this yellow here. All right, I see a green and a black, and I see a green and a black, but unfortunately, they are opposites of what I need them to be to place them there, so that's not going to help me right now. Now, I could do something like this, but that means I need to find a tile that definitely has green, white, and orange, and that might be difficult. But the nice thing is, if I did, then I get to fill in both of those holes at the same time. So, you know what? I'm gonna take the gamble this time and see if it plays out. But I don't have high hopes. All right. Hmm. Orange, purple, yellow, and red. Ooh, there's a purple, orange, perfect. That fits right there, and we have completed our first set of four tiles with the hole in the middle. So now I can choose to place yellow, orange, purple, or white in the center of that tile. Looking at my board, I already have another purple up here. I've got three other oranges out. And I only have one more white. So I'm gonna place white here because it's a pretty rare color for right now. And we'll keep going. All right, oh, I got lucky again. This is purple and red right there. So now I've already placed white, so I could put black, purple, or red there. And I will choose to place purple I have a lot of, so I'm gonna avoid that. Let's do red right there. All right, we draw again. Hmm. All righty. Green and white, ah, that's too bad. That's the perfect green and white, but it's red and not orange, so that's not going to match there. That would have been wonderful if it did, um, but we didn't get quite that lucky. Now, I could put this tile over here like this. Uh, yeah, sure, why not? That'll work fine. Then purple and red is another pair. Let's keep going. Yellow, orange, blue, and white. I don't have a lot of option with yellow, orange, blue, and white. I'm gonna go up top here with the yellow and hope for this blue, orange pair. All right. No. Yellow, purple, green, and white. I don't like these colors so much. Hmm. All right, let's do this. That gives me a green and blue possibility. Uh, again, we've got that same problem. Purple and red, red and purple, they're opposites. They don't match, unfortunately. But the red and yellow does match right there. So I've got green, yellow, red, or purple. I've already placed red. Um... Yeah, I'll go with yellow because I've already given up one of my yellow opportunities. So I'll put that there and we keep going. Yellow, white, red, blue. Hmm. If I put that blue, I build a purple, white option that I don't think I've seen much. Uh, there was one here, but that's okay. We'll keep going. 
Oh, and again, opposite purple and white. That's not great, but that's okay. We'll keep going. I've got a yellow and red. I've got a purple and red that actually fits perfectly right there in the corner. So purple, green, or orange are all possible placements. I did give up a possible green and a possible purple, but I have lots of purple out. So I'm going to put, you know what? I don't have any orange out except for there. So I'm gonna put that one there. And we'll keep going. Green and blue fits perfectly right there. Uh, green, blue, or white. I've already placed white, so I can place green or blue. I've still got lots of option and openings for green. So I'm gonna put my blue right there. Next, we did just block off here. I needed a perfect purple, green, black to fit in that hole, but we might get lucky. We'll see what happens. Um, this tile is not going to fit nicely in any of those locations yet. So we will have to expand somewhere. Uh, let's see. The bottom is all orange and yellow. I could put this here. Yeah, why not? White and orange is a good possible matching. And that would get me a green, which would be helpful because I do need to place my green still. All right, next one. Purple, orange, black, and blue. Orange and blue, unfortunately, are on opposite sides. I need to be on corners to match there. Purple and white. I don't have any white on this tile. We're gonna have to build off somewhere. Let's put this here. That gives me a purple opportunity and a green opportunity. I just need a blue and white in that corner. All right, orange, yellow, purple, black. We're not getting the colors that we want to be seeing yet. So I'm going to place this orange here because that's adding on to a possible purple. Ah, no. This is something we need to be careful of. No tile will ever have the same color on two sides. So here's a yellow and here's a yellow. That's gonna be a dead end for us. I don't wanna do that. I could put this orange here though and get a possible black blue and I do need to place the black. So that's not a bad place to think. All right, we've got black, red, blue, red, yellow, blue, or black, blue. I don't have any of those pairs. Blue and black would be great here, but they're on opposite sides of the tile. Um, hmm, that's not very helpful. Let's go over here to the side, add on here, because that will potentially give me black and will potentially get me purple. Next. Ooh, there's my black blue, perfect. Now doing this, we are going to kill this red red, but that's okay because we're getting near to the end and we've only got three left to place of those colors the only one i need to place is black so black will go in there so we're looking to place green and purple all right got red and white orange and red black and white or black and orange i don't think that's going to help me right now so we will need to extend somewhere Hmm. I don't really want to do that because we've got orange orange but realistically it's near the end of the game so that's not going to be horrible so let's just do that uh, there's an orange white which would be nice but the blue and green unfortunately doesn't match uh, but we do have an orange white here which works perfectly because the green can go right inside there. Which means we've only got one left to place, which is a purple. All right. No purple on this tile. But if we can find a purple that's already been finished, ah, that gets us one step closer. If I can get a green orange, then I can use that purple to place this flower. Next. Ah, <laughs> there's my green orange, but again, 
opposite colors, it doesn't work there. That's too bad. That would have been perfect. All right. Hmm. And again, we have the green and black here, but the purple orange is a problem. This looks like it's going to be one that I just placed somewhere that doesn't help us at all. Because I don't want it to hurt us either. There are no purples that I'm working on immediately, but I will place this. Yeah, that's not great. All right, let's put this here. Because if I can get a purple orange, then we can get that purple also. Nope, no green orange, no purple orange. I've got white, black, orange, and yellow. Hmm. No, that's not very helpful at all. Yeah, that's completely unhelpful. Looking at the purples that I can figure out, there's no real spot that I want to place this to help me in any real sort of way. So I'm just going to add this to the end. It doesn't hurt me because there's no reason I need to fill in here right now anyway. And well, we'll turn over the last tile and hope that we get something good. And what do you know? We got really lucky. There's my green and orange. Which means I can place the purple right there. And I've successfully managed to place all eight of the blossom tokens. Now we are out of tiles, so my final score is just going to be the total number of blossoms that I've placed, which in this case is eight. So we finished the game with a score of eight. All right, so while we're down here, like normal, I do like to take a look at the components that come with the game. The components that come with this game is everything you see on the screen right now. There's nothing else with the game. So I will show you a couple of these tiles up close. I really, really do love the design of these tiles. I love that they put these sort of drops in the water so you can really get this feeling that it is a lake or it is a body of water that has some depth and has some life to it. The lily pads, obviously the flowers are growing from the lily pads, so they make sense as well, but it also fills in some of the space and really adds to the look of the tiles to have these random floating lily pads. So I really do like that. All of the different flowers have different shapes as well as colors aside from black and white, but it's very easy to tell the difference between black and white. So this game should be very colorblind friendly. Uh, I guess green and orange look like they may be similar as well. Yeah, green and orange is similar as well, but I would assume that they've done colorblind testing and it, those two colors are different enough that it shouldn't be a problem. The tiles themselves are also incredibly thick. I don't know if you can see that on the camera right now, but they're very thick, very sturdy, very nice tiles. And the backs of them have this beautiful design and it, you can't probably tell on the camera, but it's, it's raised, it's embossed on the surface of the tile. The glossy sheen with the embossed pattern on it, these are really, really, really nice tiles. The tokens themselves are, are wooden discs with the flowers screen printed on them. Um, just, yeah, I mean, they don't need to be more than what they are, but they feel really nice. They're nice chunky wooden bits. They fit into the play, play area very well. And I am always a fan of wooden components, so I really like what they've done with the flowers here. The rule book I already showed you at the beginning. I really do enjoy the sort of thematic flair that comes out in the way that they've designed this rule book and in the way that the game itself has been designed. It is a very sort of relaxing, puzzly kind of game. We'll get more into that in my final thoughts, but this rule book is a nice touch. And then finally, I always like to take a look at the insert. This game comes in a small box, pretty thick, small box. If you open it up, this is all you get inside, but I think what they've done here is very, very clever and works very well. This box piece inside, the tokens actually came in a bag, but I don't feel any reason that you need to have them in a bag. All of the tokens go right into there very nicely. And the tiles all slide right in like this. Into the box like that. And I promise you, if you put all the tiles in, they fit just perfectly in the box with no space whatsoever. So when you put the lid on, everything stays in here and is held very, very, very well. 
I think this box design is very well done. I think the overall design of this game is, is very well done. And yeah, I'm very happy with the components. So maybe back up top and we'll discuss what I think about the game. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the playthrough. This game is a bit of an interesting one for me because just last week I had never even heard about this game and didn't even know it existed. The review copy arrived unexpected at the end of last week and when I opened it up, the first thing I saw is it's a nice small box. It's a very beautiful looking game. I'm a big fan of tiling games. I'm a big fan of spatial puzzle kind of games. So I said, let's give it a shot and see what this game is all about. The first few times I played this game, it was a little bit frustrating. It's difficult. I couldn't figure out a pattern. I couldn't figure out a good sort of strategy for this game. And most of the times when I'm playing this game, I was able to place about seven of the blossoms. The least I've ever placed is six. And actually, this playthrough right now today is the first time I've ever managed to place all eight of the blossoms. That said, something about this game kept pulling me back in. It's very quick. As I said already, it's very beautiful. The idea of placing tiles and matching patterns, as I said, is something that I really enjoyed doing. So it brought me back to the table three times, four times, five times, and now I've played this game more than 10 times and it just keeps coming back out. Since doing the playthrough for this video, I've actually gone back in and played a couple of times more before I recorded this final thoughts section. And I finally managed to score up to 11 points, which was a really good feeling. But the more I play this game, the, the more I agree with sort of the original intent of this game in that it really is the journey. It really is the action of playing this game that is the exciting part of this game. And the fact that it's a co-op game, I've only played it solo. And the co-op game doesn't change anything. You're just taking turns placing tiles. And the fact of this is that that relaxing sort of puzzly aspect is exactly what this game brings. And the more I play it, the more I'm enjoying it for that very reason. Is it fun to win? Is it fun to score bigger amounts of points? Yes. Is it fun to start to work out these patterns and these strategies in your head? Absolutely it is. And, and I enjoy that and I'm definitely learning and trying new things every time I play the game. But that's not why it keeps getting back to the table. It keeps getting back to the table because it's pretty. I'm not gonna lie, I like a good looking game. It keeps getting back to the table because it's quick, it's short. It keeps getting back to the table because as I showed you, the box insert works really well and it's super easy to pull out and get into a game. But ultimately it keeps getting back to the table because there is this sort of meditative, relaxing brain puzzle that's going on here. It's not just placing, because placing is fun, but it's also thinking what is the best optimization or the best tactical decision I can make to place this tile down on the table without stressing or, or worrying too much about end game or what's going to come next. Just, huh, I wonder what's gonna happen if I do this. Or maybe if I put this here and I put this here, it might work out. And if it doesn't, so be it. But if it does, it feels really good. And just this, this, this sort of practice or this action of these tactical decisions and these matching of, of pretty images on, on the, the table is, is something that I enjoy doing. It is somewhat akin to building a jigsaw puzzle on the table, but there's a little bit more thought that goes in here because I'm not just placing to match. There are often multiple places that I can place to match and the decision there is still an interesting decision. So as it comes to my, my sort of recommendation for whether or not you should try out this game, I have to say straight up, if you're looking for a game that's all about scoring points or about beating the game, this probably isn't going to be a game that you want to get into. But if you're somebody who enjoys a tile laying game, if you're somebody who enjoys that spatial puzzle, if you're somebody who just enjoys this sort of tactical thinking activity of, of putting together tiles and, and coming up not only with a nice looking image at the end, but potentially you know reaching this goal that you're looking to uh, finish or to match then i would definitely strongly recommend checking this one out it's small it's easily portable it pulls out and plays very quickly and it's just a really really nice way to wind down at the end of a day if you've had a long stressful day and you want to play something just to sort of wind down 
this is going to be a great way for you to be able to do that. And I definitely, definitely strongly recommend checking this one out. Again, it's not going to be for everybody. I'm not going to push you to instantly go out and buy this game, but I definitely strongly recommend checking it out. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please remember to like and subscribe below, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.